Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. First of all, I would like to say thank you uh, for those who come because you guys have sacrificed your lunch time to, to attend this talk. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get started. Oh, before that, my name is Nur Adiatul Atika bin Haji Rasli and this is my partner, Nur Shakira Huti <laughs> Uh, so I am very sure that all of you have your own theories about ghosts and supernatural. Some of you might think that they really exist, but some of you also might think that they are just an illusion or um, kind of like a myth. So from our research, we have found that um, Gallup survey 2005, we don't have the current um, database, so we take this one. Uh, there are, oh, and before that, I stressfully say that this only um, takes place in the western side of the country and not Brunei to avoid ethical issues. So, there are at least three out of four Americans harbor at least one paranormal belief. So why is that? Why does this uh, type of belief even exist? So it might be because of the environment they are raised in are, um, how to say this, for example, their families have this belief, so they are um, set to believe that ghosts and supernaturals exist. Or it can also be because of religion. And another uh, explanation is maybe due to peer pressure, because I think everyone can relate to peer pressure um, where one feel left out if he or she does not have the same opinion or belief as the others. But on a more drastic events, they may self-encounter this so-called ghost or spirits. So, and another one is passion. For this case, it might not be that they really encounter or whatnot. It might be because of they read too much fictions, they uh, watch too many horror movies, so that they have this um, interest to kind of like write about these so-called horror events that never actually happened. Or it may be due to their imagination like I explained earlier. So, so these are 10 scientific explanations that we have found from our research. Um, so this ghostly phenomena, um, not specifically on one type of event, but it could be anything. It could be because of the electric stimulation of the brain, ideal motor effect, infrasound, automatism, drafts, camera issues, carbon monoxide poisoning, mass hysteria, ions, and quantum mechanics. Although we have 10, uh, I'm not going to explain all 10 today because you might get bored, so I'm just going to focus on three, which is ideal motor effect, drafts, and also camera issues. Drafts is a presence of different temperatures in a house or buildings. The air grows cold on one side but normal at the other side. This is called cold spot. Ghost hunters usually said that cold spot usually is a sign of paranormal activity. For example, a ghost appears out of thin air and scares people to death. And this emits energy, hence they draw heat from its surroundings, including people, in order to manifest. This is an um, example of drafts, and this is called uh, electromagnetic field meters. They use this to search for cold spot. So whenever the whenever they whenever the cold spot appears, the meter will usually um, turn to red. <laughs> We are going to show you an example of drafts since there's 
so, uh, some technical problems. We can't um, view the video from the slide. So. That is the EMF meter, and once this light up, this will move by itself. Scientific explanation, skeptics usually investigate haunted houses and found cool air entering the house through a chimney or a window. At the original explanation, every object has its own temperature involving the process known as convection. The effect of swirling air will feel cool against a person's skin, hence the cold spot. So, another explanation is camera issues. So, uh, camera issues is when if you look at a photograph and then you spot a glowing ball of light. This is called orbs and so mostly skeptics and ghost hunters think that these so-called orbs are the spirits of people who passed away but quite have it, not quite uh, have so, which means they are stuck in between worlds. So, these orbs are invisible to the naked eye and can only be seen in photographs. With the use of camera flash, this orb will appear glowing but out of focus. And somehow, I don't know where th does the idea of a ghost come from, so uh, there are uh, scientific explanations for this. As you can see, Oh, oh. The, um, actually, they might think that these orbs are ghosts because most, as we searched uh, most, the pic most of the pictures that have these orbs are either in the cemetery, uh, so-called creepy rundown mansion, but actually, these orbs appear in, it's, it appear everywhere it gets annoying at times. So maybe also, if you can look closely, these orbs somehow look like kind, kind of have face. You see the eyes and the mouth. So I think uh, that is one of the reasons why people think that these orbs are ghosts or spirits. But instead of I mean, I mean, this orbs might not be a ghost. It might be a dust speck or box that are too close to the camera, or fine hairs, dirty or red lenses, lens reflection, movement during exposure. So, ideomotor effect. So this is the last uh, scientific explanation that we have for today. So in 1840s and 1850s, the spiritualist movement at that time was very big. It was very big because they have found and provided a way for people to talk with their dead loved ones. And one method of communication that they provided is the Ouija board. So, I'm pretty sure all of you know the Ouija board, right? Yes. Uh, so, uh, but I'm, I'm still going to explain it. The Ouija board is a board with letters and numbers a simple yes or no, and also provided a planchet. So a planchet is um, the one that they use, the wooden, kind of like a heart-shaped thing that they use to move, uh, that are what they call move by themselves, um, so that they can summon the ghost. Um, so people then place their hands on a planchet and ask the spirits questions. and. 
They think that a ghost will respond by moving the planchette from letter to letter, spelling out a response. Or, in some cases, or drastic cases, the table would move by itself. So, that is the Ouija board, and the one that the girl is holding is the planchette. So, uh, originally, this planchette, okay, so planchette comes from the word, uh, it is a, a French word, actually, that people originally use to do automatic writing. As you can see, the one, uh, those planchette have three rods so that they can move, right? So that rods is actually, are actually holes to place the pencils. So somehow, I don't know, whose idea uh, to turn a object for writing into a paranormal object. So, we can also uh, view this video from the slide, so I'm going to show you. So, it is as if the planchet is moving by itself, but we don't know actually. Okay, so, <laughs> the actual reason for the movement of the planchet is actually, um, this is due to, uh, it, this is from a research by a very renowned physicist known as Michael Faraday. Well, he had the idea that this, um, this is the table tilting. Uh, that the tables were often moved due to ideal motor effect. So, ideal motor effect is um, it is when our muscles we unconscious unconsciously move them. So we don't realize that it that it is our own muscle that moves the table due to high expectation of uh, the table to move. Like they really believe that it uh, will move, they actually move it by themselves, but they don't realize because it is the unconscious muscle that doing the work. Um, about the planch uh, the movement of planchet, um, in psychology, this is what we call as the dissociative state. So this is a state in which illusion of the moving uh, um, our consciousness is divided or cut off from some as aspects of the individual's normal cognitive, motor and sensory function. So, during this, um, what we called as seance, the um, kind of like, the ritual that is called seance, um, they, I, I think everybody see that the, the planchet move, right? But they don't actually see it. I mean, they see it, but they don't realize they're moving it by themselves. I mean, they are the one who move it. So this dissociative state and this ideal motor effect work together to fool themselves, fool the person itself. Since um, the person's cognitive is cut off, hence, uh, they don't realize that their unconscious muscle are moving the planchet and the table tilting. 
Do you get what I mean? Yes. <coughs> so, conclusion: We don't have proofs that ghosts truly exist. There are a series of events that show there's a high probability that it does not exist. There are also some events that is really hard to decipher whether there is a scientific explanation behind it or not. It is still up to each individual to believe its existence. One's mind and beliefs are not always the same as others. But for our opinion, but for our opinion, but uh, we did still believe that ghosts are exist. Although, uh, although we are doing this research, but because of our religion and our sense of logic, we actually believe that um, ghosts are real. Uh, we are doing this research because we are just curious what um, the, should I call Western minds think? So it's... <laughs> okay, so... Thank you. <laughs> Should I change it? Any questions? Anything at all? We will try our best to answer. Please change the slide. Okay. <laughs> okay. More like it. <laughs> <laughs> 